I shit on these entrepreneurs in this era. You gave me the internet? Fuck you. One thing that I do that really helps helps me, I ask myself a very simple question. Would I recommend myself as fill in the blank? Would I recommend myself as a dad, as a CEO, as a business partner? And if the answer is no, why? And what am I doing wrong? When it comes to DMs, I feel like people want to know, like, what's in it for me? So when I write an email, I could spend three hours on an email, sleep on it, review it, edit it. How can I make it shorter? Is the caption punchier? If I was the recipient, how would I react to it? Like, it's not like just, oh, I'm going to DM and boom. It's like, how do I get this person to respond in the way that I want the response to happen? And I don't believe in... Real quick. Yep. And what we're painting for everybody who's listening is, look, the fucking internet has given everybody an at-bat it doesn't mean that you can hit a fastball. And so the work you put into having the ability to hit a fastball, but the fact that we're now in a place where everyone gets an at-bat, which was not the case pre-internet, is bonkers, bonkers shit. You're a genius about this DM thing though because like I got a lot of layers to get to me. I have my assistant, voicemail, email, people screen my email, but I check my own social. So I actually, to your point, now that you bring it up, the guy that does all my merch for my company, uh, 29029, this race company we have, DM'd me. And you know what he said? He created a win-win. I mean, I'm sorry. He created a no-lose. Win-wins don't work. Because if I say a win-win, we, you talk about this too? No, no, uh, I like where you're going. When you have a win-win, Gary might win here. And I might win here. That's not a win-win. That's a Gary's dominating the win. A no-lose is, oh, there's no risk, I can't lose. He sent me a DM and he said, hey, send me your logo, I'll send you a bunch of samples of stuff, no cost, no risk, no anything. If you like it, I'd love a shot to work with you. I'm like, okay. I sent it to him, a day later I get a FedEx with this amazing product line and I'm like, done. Hundreds of thousands of dollars later. We talked about this earlier and it's great for everybody to listen. It's about doing instead of talking. People DM me all day long, Gary, I wanna work for you for free. Okay, what's amazing, like if you think about it, that sounds win-win. No loses, Gary, I made this. And then we look at it. Our team looks at things that are made with my content. We, we 99.999% of the time don't even hear you when you say you're gonna work for free. Yeah. Action. Always action. I had invited, um, I went to a dinner party with my wife and they went around the room and they asked everyone to name three people that were alive they'd wanna have dinner with. And you came up, oh, Gary, Buffett, this one, that one. But when it came to me, all three of mine were rappers. And the reason was I wanted to meet the three people that changed the course of my life as a 14-year-old kid growing up in New York. So at the end of the dinner, I called my 10, I, I invited the 10 most influential artists in my life to my house for dinner, and they all came. It's cool. I knew two of them. And people are like, how did you get Rakim, man? How did you get Big Daddy Kane? And I'm like, I asked them in a no lose and they came. People want to help people. Yeah, it's really crazy because again, it's super important because I want to make sure the listener gets value. You put up enough W's on the board and had enough social currency to pull off that Hail Mary, which is amazing. You're right. On the flip side, it's also how you got there because the 21 year old you that had nothing was willing to ask 100 people to get one yes. Yes. Okay, that's why I'm fired up. So for everybody listening, if you've put enough wins on the board, you're probably more likely to get seven out of 10 yeses than you think. And for everybody who's the 20 year old you and me that nobody knows at all or gives any fucks, you will get a one out of 400. How do I know that? Because you and I are exactly the characters that say yes out of that 400 once every thousand times. I still do it. Me too, <laughs> which is why I'm saying it again. Yeah. This is a very important conversation. And because we grew up in the same era, I shit on these entrepreneurs in this era. You gave me the internet? Fuck you. Fuck you. This internet thing? Fuck you, man. First of all, I would have definitely not graduated high school. And second of all, I would have made some crazy shit happen. Like, you've got it so easy right now. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I, just to, to that point, Gary, when I was starting out at Marquee Jet, I was looking for my first customer. And I didn't have a database. I didn't have Salesforce. I had no way to get lead. The only way I could get a lead was to show up where rich what year people was this? were. This, this was like in 99. 
Right. But I had to go where rich people were. I didn't, we didn't have- You had a pager? A what? Did you have a pager in 99? I had a pager. I probably had like, yeah. a, but there was no- But you had that pager to like act cool. I had to show up. 100%. I couldn't like, I didn't like, I had no email list. And I heard about this event called TED, this conference called TED in Monterey, <laughs> California. And I'm like, there's gotta be rich people at TED. So I flew 16 hours. I connected in Chicago, landed in LA, drove five hours to Monterey. And I get to the event and I recognize immediately like you can't get into TED without a credential. And I'm like, what's so ridiculous? You need a credential? So I, I just traveled 16 hours, I need a sale. So I go to the coffee shop and I realize that every 15, every hour and a half people are coming in and they're ordering lattes and muffins because they're on break, they have credentials, they're on break at the conference, so I'm like, so the next day I showed up at the, at the coffee shop and you I- stole a No, I bought up. every single muffin in the store. I controlled all the muffin inventory <laughs> in Monterey, California. I believe in this shit. And the first break comes and the guy comes, I was like, I'll have a latte and a muffin. The guy's like, you can have a latte, but we're out of muffins. He comes back out, I'm like, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, sir. I overheard you, I actually have a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> 450 muffins. <laughs> Would you want one? He's like, well, he's like, no, 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 you can take one. I says, well, what do you do? We start talking. I said, I own a, a, a jet company. He goes, get out of here. He's like, I'm actually in the, this really happened to me. I'm actually in the market for a private jet. He goes, do you mind if we sit down and talk about it? I'm like, Mr. Qualified, you can sit wherever you want to sit, man. Absolutely. And, and he was my first sale. Josh Koppelman from half.com. Oh, and that's how my first sale. But like, but if you think about it, it's actually stunningly unbelievable and wildly not. It's incredibly practical. You know who your customer is, go there. What pisses me off, and this is why he's telling this story and it's an interesting take, is that's amazing and epic and iconic of a story. You can lay in your fucking bed and email and DM people. Like what does it matter with people? Like the, back to nothing is impossible. Well, the internet has made it uncomfortably easy. And yet people are losing? Fuck you. <laughs>